Hi, I'm Perry Atkinson, General Manager here at The Dove. Hey, check out our other videos and check out our website at thedove.us. Welcome to Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and delighted to have in the studio with us a person that I met sitting next to on an airplane, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Anna Gorgeous is with us today. She's a registered dietitian with Ventana Wellness. And I guess we kind of have to tell the story, right? We shall. <laughs> we, uh, we were on a plane together from, I think, Salt Lake to um, coming into, uh, or was it Denver? Was it Salt Lake? It was Salt Lake to Medford. Okay, and we're coming into Medford, and we're sitting next to each other, and we just got to chit-chatting, and you were uh, applying for a dietitian job in Grants Pass, mm -hmm. and that didn't work out. And I said, well, you ought to check out Nisha Jackson over at Ventana. Yes. yes. <laughs> and lo and behold, here you are. Yes. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Well, listen, we want to talk about uh, dieting because um, I think we're all into it. We're all concerned about it, what is good and what is not. And, uh, but first of all, tell us a little bit about your background. How come you chose this? Well, I have specialized in endocrinology and more of the naturopathic um, therapies, helping people to literally use food as medicine. Um, and especially in the world that we're living in, it's, you know, let's give this medication and then let's give this medication to alter yeah. the effects of that medication. <laughs> and and we really are destroying um, our, our system. So it's important that you know we are putting in good quality all right so you're using food for medicine yes all right <laughs> well you know there's a gazillion diets and you probably see people come up and down most of the diets out there what do you think of them just in general Any, anything that's good well i think a lot of them are fads but um you know there is some truth behind or some benefits behind the paleo and kind of the gluten-free direction that things have been going. Um, but in my, pers in, in my perception, I think it's more about balance. Um, I think it's all gonna go back to moderation of all things. All things are good, yeah. you know, yeah. for the most part. Um, but we do wanna look at really the foods that we are putting in our systems, like, that we're eating real food and not processed food. You know, you could do a sugar-free diet, but if you're putting in all the chemicals from these artificial sugars and everything, then you're really not benefiting yourself. You're creating more of a toxic system, and um, so that's not gonna help you in the long run. Uh, I am surprised how the gluten-free um, interest has taken off. I mean, where was it five years ago? Right. Today, you even see the GF on menus. Right. W what is it? What is it? Well, um, gluten can cause inflammation in the system to your cells, not only to your cells, but your, in, your intestines. And the problem that has come about is that um, we don't make breads even the same as we used to. So um, sourdough is actually going to have a lower gluten content because of the way that it's created. Um, it's allowed to sit, so there are enzymes and probiotics that are able to build up in there. Um, but now we make quick rise breads and they do have a lot of gluten. Um, and this becomes very toxic to our system because of um, almost like sludge that it can create in, in our intestines and cause leaky gut and, <laughs> you know, then we're losing all of our nutrients. Well, uh, it's very popular and yet uh, very, um, what can I say, people are very allergic to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the gluten. So uh, it's become quite the issue. So it's a yes. good thing it's been discovered, I guess. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, by the way, today is uh, homemade bread day. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, even rye has a lower gluten content, so it's it's not all bad. <laughs> okay. Well, um, supplements. Um, why don't we just take more vitamins and keep on eating? The problem is with supplements is a lot of them are synthetic. Um, if we were to go with 
whole foods where we're going to get nutrients that our cells actually recognize, then that would be fine. But there are so many out there that it gets really tricky. And especially if we're not seeing those labels with GMP, which is a good manufacturer's practice, we don't realize, mm. you know, what is actually in it. I mean, the um, supplement, the supplement realm is still not regulated well enough for us to know truly what is in a product. Um, and like Lannis Pauling used to say, it's kind of like this lock and key fit. So let's say you're eating a carrot and you're getting your vitamin A. When that vitamin A comes into the cell membrane, it, it, the lock fits into the hole, it opens and it floods into the cell. Well, if you have something that's a synthetic vitamin A, it's going to come into the cell. Your cell's gonna say, I kind of recognize that, but it's gonna get jammed and it doesn't open that door to flood into the cell. So then what do we do? We just excrete all of what we've just put in our systems um, from the synthetic form. So they're a waste. Um, a lot of people do take uh, daily multivitamins and others in uh, some people say they work, some people say they don't. There's been some reports out say, you know, it's a waste of time and money. How do you know when you're getting something good? Well, like I said, what you really want to look for is that um, GMP label on there. Um, that, w that way you know you have a good quality. Um, and, you know, mostly the supplement um, brands that have been around for a while. Um, you know, there are some newer ones that are great too. And I could I could go on with <laughs> with names, but um, I'll refrain. Just you know, but um, you know that's that's primarily it. And like I said, making sure that it's from a whole food source, so that the derivatives state that it's from you know vegetable or fruit, and then you know. Um, of course, uh, the, the big ones, the vitamin C's. Now this time of year, D and B. Where are you on that? Nearly every one of us is deficient in vitamin D. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with our ozone, for one, mm -hmm. the way that that is and the way that we're absorbing vitamin D. Um, and, you know, the fact that we do use a lot of sunscreens and other things that on our skin that can block that um, the sun's rays from coming and creating vitamin D in our systems. And I think vitamin D is... is in, imperative to get in because it's not only you know for mood but it's also imperative for our bone density and a lot of people get confused because they may take vitamin d but if you're not taking a vitamin d3 then it's more difficult for your body because you have to convert d1 d2 d3 might as well take d3 yeah. avoid all of that okay but all right, we're talking about nutrition today, and <laughs> Anna's with, uh, she's the new dietitianist there uh, with uh, Ventana Wellness. All right, the big one, the big, the big topic, and we can start it, we'll come back to it, is sugar. Uh, I don't know how you avoid it. And uh, I think we're all addicted, myself included, but I also have some not good reactions to too much sugar. Um, Please tell me there's a pill out there I can take that takes the craving away. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is a great herb called gymnema, which alters the sweet taste buds on your tongue and can trigger to the brain to teach it to not crave sugar. So really? Where do you get this? There's a pill for everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and is that a natural thing? Mm -hmm, it is. And you take that, and mm -hmm. that just helps cure. Yeah. Well, is, is sugar the big enemy? It, sugar in itself is not necessarily bad, but it's, again, it goes back to the, the root of it, what its, what it, what its form is. Mm -hmm. If it's something that is still nutrient dense that we're getting from complex carbs, like you know sweet potatoes, or you're doing things like whole grains, or quinoa, or beets, or fruit, um, that's a good sugar. Um, of course, that too can be taken in excess, yeah. but um, it's, again, the, how much and how often that okay. we're doing it. All right, so where would you start, Anna, with somebody that 
obviously wants to lose some weight. Where, what do you do as a dietitian? What do you do to analyze this person and where do you start? Usually I like to see what they're actually eating, um, take a look at their diet. One of the um, biggest things that I see as a fault is that people actually don't eat frequently enough. Okay, so we're going long spans of time without eating, your blood sugar drops, and by the time you do eat, your blood sugar spikes, and then we're plummeting all over again. So it's creating, um, you know, this Rocky Mountain effect. Right. And that is what leads more to the weight gain and insulin resistance and, and cascades into, you know, thyroid disorders, or we go on you know, a lot of these diets are fads. And I've, I've realized in my years of work that that actually affects how the thyroid functions because it's so much stress in the system um, that your body can't adapt as well to wow. doing so. Um, all right, let me take a break when we come back because part of all of this now, it appears that diabetes is on the rise. Mm -hmm. Is it epidemic? I mean, it's borderline. Oh, yes, it is. You think and, it is? Yeah, and I mean, you're seeing it in kids. Okay, so number one, is it preventable? Number two, can be reversed? It, it can, it is preventable mm -hmm. um, for the most part. Yeah. There is a 30% the genetic, genetic yeah. link. Um, but I've seen firsthand that it can be reversed. Okay, we'll talk about that when we come back <laughs> uh, with uh, Ann in just a few moments. Okay, we're back and we're delighted to have with us today uh, Anna Gorgeous. She is a registered dietitian with Benten and Wellness. And um, we're talking about all kinds of things when it comes to dieting. And we kind of have a unique connection because we actually first met sitting on an airplane together, flying from Salt Lake back to Denver. And she was coming out to interview with somebody else. And I said, no, nah, Anna, you go talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while, but it worked, huh? It did. It all right, did. good to see you. Um, all right, we talked a little bit about diabetes. You know, I am... I'm just amazed that we don't make the connection that we're just sugaring ourselves up and our kids are coming, becoming diabetic at very early age. Mm -hmm. I mean, why aren't we getting this? I mean, it's obvious what we're doing to ourselves. You know, that floors me as well. Yeah. Um, you know, with how much our foods are processed, um, I think that that's one of the biggest culprits. And you know, you're talking about the energy drinks uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, kids just getting loaded up on sugars and, you know, even with juice, kids don't need juice. Um, pick up a piece of fruit and it's going to be digested slower. You're going to get more nutrients from it and you're not having that surge of sugar to your bloodstream. Um, you know, and it, it also goes back to my initial statement of balance, you know. If you're eating a carbohydrate all by itself, you're going to go through that spike and plummet. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at balance and we're eating snacks, you know, incorporating protein, we're going to slow down how quickly we're breaking that protein down. So it's not as much of a rise. We have more stable energy. Um, and then, you know, we're helping to prevent some of that diabetic You result. said earlier that diabetes can be reversed. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize there's some genetic components to this, mm -hmm. but a lot of these that come on can come off. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, again, it go, it, it's about changing the diet. It's about changing your habits um, and also incorporating activity. Um, I think that that's another good point to make, too. The uh, exercise mm -hmm. and water. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about diet and pain. Uh, I know there at Ventana, you guys do a lot with this where you change a diet, maybe even a lot of taking out a lot of sugar as it relates to inflammation. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you address that. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that um, sugar and, again, a lot of these processed foods, especially those that are more GMO and, you know, medications, it causes a lot of dysbiosis in the gut. So um, we're actually not metabolizing foods very well. And when you get especially sugar in there, 
um, you start to create more of what we would call more harmful, I don't want to say bad bacteria, but it is harmful bacteria mm. um, and harmful fungus like candida in the gut. And that in itself can cause a lot of inflammation and again, leaky gut in the system, which cascades into so many different things. So just by cutting back on the sugar, mm -hmm. what do you use in the way of supplements for inflammation, anything? Oh gosh, there's a, a full list. Um, turmeric is great, um, cayenne, as well as um, oregano oil is really good, rosemary, um, ginger and garlic. It's, it's actually the key component called allicin, which is in garlic that helps to reduce a lot of inflammation. It also helps to clean up the gut too. So a lot of those work hand in hand, so it's really great. I'm glad to hear ginger, because when I go to the sushi restaurant, I get, oh, yeah. the, I get the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. the wasabi and the, and the ginger. Okay, well, hopefully that's good for me. Yes. Um, you know, in, sometimes in weight loss, people will uh, try to do it with some fad diets. Other people will do a very aggressive workout plan. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of good because I realize you're, they're, they're doing something. Uh, they can easily get discouraged and not follow through. But what good is an exercise program without a good nutrition program? Exactly. You said it right there. I mean, they, they work hand in hand. I know a lot of people ask, well, can I just, you know, work out and not have to eat healthy? Yeah. Or can I just, you know, kind of change my diet a little bit and just not work out? Well, you can for maybe a, a brief period, but in the end, it's going to go bo both of them together, uh -huh. um, especially if you want to truly transform your body um, and heighten your, your metabolic rate. Because I see uh, when I'm at the gym, and it's fun to watch the people. <laughs> 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 I go there for entertainment sometimes, yeah, yeah. but uh, they're building so much muscle and I go, what for? I mean, what's the deal? Yeah, I mean, some people have their own ambitions on the physique, but um, truly the leaner your body composition, the higher your metabolic rate is going to be. So the more calories you're going to burn. Um, if you're leaner. Mm -hmm. So you gotta do the weight thing, mm -hmm. okay. And if you're just turning fat to muscle, you're re you may not be gaining a whole lot there other than a physique. Right, you know? right. So, but exactly. if you're not getting leaner, then what's going on here? Correct. Wow. Um, all right, because I go there and I'm, I'm watching some of these people and I go, this is really kind of funny to watch. You know? I don't <laughs> yeah. know what they're trying to do, but uh, yeah. I'm not into that. Um, okay, so what about a workout? What, uh, where do you go from muscle um, training or building to... Um, Aerobic. Meaning how do you get... The balance there. Oh, okay. Um, well, me personally, I do half and half. I will do three days cardio, three days weight training. Other people will do, you know, half and half on every single day. It just kind of depends on what your interest level is. You know, do what's fun. Uh, first off, with exercise at all, mm. do what you find is fun. Otherwise, you're gonna, not going to stick with it. Yeah. Um, the second part is, you know... Truly, we don't want to solely do weight training. You want to do some cardio um, because you want to strengthen your heart at the same time. But um, a, th a lot of people don't realize how important um, weight training is too. Not only to get muscles, but um, that's for bone building. Mm. And I, I used to train triathletes and, and work with them with their nutrition and also I've been an athlete for, for many a years and um, I recall even um, runners that would, you know, they would go from their running season or from their swimming season and then they'd jump into running and they would get stress fractures and, you know, shin splints and it's because they're not doing weight bearing activity with literally weights in the gym, mm. you know, to strengthen those bones and then you get those fractures. Well, I've often said, and I'm certainly not the pro you guys are, but uh, at least start with a good walk. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if I not walk 20 minutes, what's wrong with that? Anything that you can do yeah. is gonna be beneficial and nothing. Um, what about the person who eating healthy, 
on a good diet, disciplined. They do some exercise. They're hanging in there, doing all the things, but they right. still got pain. Um, again, I would go back to the diet because there is something that is going wrong. There is some sort of um, dysbiosis in the gut in which they either their pH is not balanced because that can happen. Um, you know, you're not making enough enzymes to break down your food, so your body is either becoming toxic or you're eating these other foods that are um, that have become more allergenic to your system um, and causing inflammation to the cells and to the joints. And also, if you're not getting in, you know, some of those soothing um, foods and like fish oil, your essential fatty acids, those omega threes, are are imperative at at lubricating the joints and and um, decreasing that inflammation too. Um, there's a lot of uh, discussion and uh, actually consumption now of probiotics. Mm -hmm. Where are you on that? I think Everything that, I read seems to be good. Oh, well, I mean, they are, they are crucial, especially if you do not eat a lot of fermented foods where you're going to get them yourself, or if you're not eating foods that have prebiotics to them, um, that would be in like green tip bananas, even I know people used to tease me because I would take the strings off on, but that's a prebiotic that's going to feed the the good bacteria in your gut. Mm. Um, things like okra and artichokes and asparagus, those are also gonna be good prebiotics for your gut and then help to build up those the healthy, good probiotics. Wow, um, but the, the actual um, manufacturing now of probiotics, and uh, you go on there and they go, uh, Kazillion, billions, and zillions. I don't know. <laughs> what, what are we looking for? <laughs> you know? I, I always like to encourage a broad spectrum um, probiotic, something that's going to contain a lot of different strands because every strand is going to be made for something different. Uh -huh. um, I mean, you have things like the Lactobacillus, um, Haviticus, and Bacterium, uh, the Bactobacterium uh, longum, which is found to um, help to decrease cortisol levels. So it, even if we have internal stress that we don't see, it can be causing chaos in our systems. Wow. Anna, the other thing that seems to be happening today is that fo folks seem to be uh, having more food allergies mm -hmm. or allergies in general seem to be on the rise. Now, yeah. part of this, I think, is what brought the uh, interest of gluten-free uh, but just general allergies, uh, mm -hmm. is, is that a diet issue? It, I think it goes back to our food industry. And, and you know, my brother-in-law gets me every year and says, you know, we didn't, weren't dealing with these things. I, why is there so, so, such a rise in this? It can't be true. It is true. I mean, you have to look at how many GMO foods we have these days, how many pesticides are going in our systems. Um, and just to kind of give a little bit more description to that, um, it, with the leaky gut reference, is that we put these things in our systems and we're not able to metabolize them well. Um, taking, for example, if you put in a GMO food, and your cells are breaking that down. And we all remember way back when in our chemistry classes where we had the DNA strand. Well, it, it, when it flips and it unravels, um, if it's a GMO, that ladder doesn't link up right again. So mm. this leg of the ladder might be connected with now this leg of the ladder. So when we have non-GMOs, your body's going to recognize it more efficiently. Um, also, we get a lot of these, um, if, our, if your gut's not healthy and we're putting in these pesticides and um, GMO foods, um, it can actually cause, what, cause holes in your intestinal lining. So what happens there is now we have these food particles that are coming through that should have been small mm. to go into the bloodstream to get absorbed. Now we have these huge holes. So you have larger food particles going into the bloodstream. Now your body's saying, what is this foreign matter? Because it's so 
big that it, it doesn't know what to do with it. And that's what causes a lot of the inflammatory factors and the allergies. Fascinating. <laughs> All right. Well, Anna is a registered dietitian uh, on staff now at Ventana Wellness. You can go to VentanaWellness.com and check out uh, all the resources there. But if you want somebody to kind of sit down with you and systematically work out a plan and get you on a good, healthy uh, eating program, here's the lady. She's the lady to do it. And I'm sure we'll be hearing from her more uh, as the days go by. But uh, some of it's common sense, but some of it we do need some coaching and analyzing, right? And that's where you come in. Yes. Okay, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back.